So, uh, yeah, basically, people still believe the Earth is flat. That's weird, in this day and age. There are some great YouTube channels like Simon Dan and Conspiracy Cats that they do the thing where um, they'll look at flat Earth arguments and then they'll break down why it is incorrect. This doesn't seem to have any effect on flat Earthers, and the normal people who believe the Earth is round just can't wrap their head around it, just can't think. I don't understand how anyone could actually think the Earth is flat. How could they think everyone else is wrong over thousands of years. So I'm going to try to do something a little different. I am going to show you, in what I believe to be, the three best arguments that the Earth is flat, and then I will explain why it's not. But I'm not going to explain straight away, because I want you, you a round earther, you a person who believes the Earth is round, I want you to have that moment of doubt, that, wait a minute, that doesn't add up, that doesn't make sense, that flat earthers have as well, just so you can see what it's like from their point of view. But then I'm going to explain why the Earth is in fact round. Okay? Here we go. Okay, just to let you know, flat earthers do not believe in space. Space to them does not exist. Which means every photograph of the Earth from space is fake. It is just a computer generated effect. It's CGI, including the pictures that were taken before the invention of CGI. I just need to say this from our first point, which is thus. Argument one. Everybody knows that there's over a thousand satellites in space. Not only that, but there's said to be 10 million pieces of human-made material up in Earth's orbit. It's like trash and technology that malfunctioned or broke off or whatever. So over a thousand satellites and tens of millions of debris. So how come we can't see any of that in any photograph of Earth's orbit? There's thousands upon thousands of pictures of Earth's orbit. There's video footage of it on a live feed from NASA. So, realistically, these pictures and videos should be littered with satellites. Not to mention even one. We can't even see one of them, not to mention a thousand. Why? If there's so many up there. Now, hopefully, I want you to have that moment in your head where you go, that is actually a really good point. That's good. I want you to have that doubt. I am going to explain it. There is a perfectly rational explanation. But I want just so you can get in the head of Flat Earther. Now, let's move on to the next two points. Point two. One question Flat Earthers often ask is, if the Earth is spinning at 1,040 miles an hour and it revolves around the Sun at 67,000 miles per hour, while the Sun shoots through space at 450,000 miles an hour, why haven't the constellations changed in thousands of years? Polaris, the North Star, how can that possibly be in the exact same spot? How come that hasn't deviated in any way over millennia, millions of years? How can it, how, if we're moving around that much? Flat Earthers say, this proves the Earth isn't spinning around, the Earth is stationary. And a very simple question is, how come you can't see the curve? You look at the ocean, it's flat. You look out of a plane, it's flat. Now, you may believe the Earth is round, but you might not necessarily be very science savvy. So you might think to yourself, those actually have some good points. Now, this is the thing. A conspiracy theorist might hear these things and there's no direct answer, so it'll just start playing with their mind a little bit, and this can go on for days, weeks, or months. And that can eventually convince them that the Earth is actually flat. And by the time they hear actual evidence, it, it's too late. It's already been drilled into them. And no other alternative argument they'll just dismiss as being wrong. So I'm going to stop that from happening and just give the answer right now. Okay, let's look at argument one. How come we can't see 1,100 satellites in space? Do, do you have any idea how big space is? You see this picture? The blue circle is low orbit. The neighboring yellow circle is medium orbit. The furthest yellow circle is high orbit. The highest orbit is nearly 36,000 kilometers above sea level. Giving plenty of space for satellites to move around. You might think the ISS that takes the pictures of Earth is in the middle yellow circle, which is why you don't see pictures of satellites. It's way closer. It's not in the middle yellow. It's not in the blue. It's in the black outline. It is that close to Earth and it's that far away from satellites, which is why you almost never see pictures of them. The ISS, the International Space Station, is gigantic. It's 239 feet long, 356 feet wide, and 66 feet tall. It's the biggest man-made structure in space. It costs $150 billion. A single collision from anything, from a meteoroid or space junk, would cause irreparable damage. So it's in low orbit, it's tens of thousands of miles away from any space debris or satellite. The funny thing is, many astronomers and astrophysicists find the collision scene and gravity unrealistic for the reason I just explained. Asking how come satellites and stuff don't crash into each other in space is like asking how come planes don't crash into each other. Because the sky is really big, except space is way bigger. Also, the International Space Station is so low, you can see the ISS with binoculars, despite the fact many flat earthers insist the station does not exist. Even though there's an app, the ISS HD Live, 
you can just download yourself. I don't think it costs anything. And it will just show you where the ISS is. It'll go around and you can just see it for yourself. Go, oh, there it is, which is pretty cool. A commercial plane is not allowed to fly higher than a few miles. The ISS can't see satellites and photos the same reason you can't see cars when you're flying high in a plane. They're just too far away. And of course, there are pictures of satellites. It's just not that common for the reasons I've already explained. Okay, now argument two. How can the constellations don't change? The first time I heard the argument, I generally thought, that's a really good point. If it was true, the constellations do change. The Earth's axis of rotation wobbles slightly, which is called precession. Although the wobble is very slight, it will affect how we see the stars over the next thousand years. In fact, we've already been able to see this happen. Polaris, the North Star, was not the North Star in ancient Egypt. Thousands of years ago, the Egyptians saw Thuban as their North Star because it was in the same position that Polaris is in now. In 11,000 years, Vega will become the Earth's North Star. Also, an amateur astronomer can tell Polaris has moved even in the last 30 or 40 years. Anyone owning a telescope with an equatorial mount will have to adjust it for the movement of Polaris due to precession. So you have to alter your telescope. You have to adjust it to be able to monitor Polaris because its position in the sky is moving. Also, if you just want a really, really short answer, um, the stars spin in the opposite direction in the North Hemisphere and the Southern Hemisphere. It's generally really funny that people don't get this now and we can see pictures of the Earth in space and see that it's clearly around when people 23, 2400 years ago could figure this out. In 340 BC, Aristotle said there are stars seen in Egypt and Cyprus which are not seen in the Northern regions. So they, that, that's impossible on a flat Earth. It's, it's only possible around Earth. And the last one, very simply, why can't we see the curve? Um, we can. It can be observed on the Lake Pontchartrain transmissions lines in Louisiana. Although there are 85 towers were built in a straight line across 15 miles of water, it's very apparent that they disappear over a curving horizon. This is explained better on flatearth.ws's website. He is one of the best flat earth debunkers. He has hundreds of arguments. Absolutely check him out. And there's the classic flat earthers that will say, um, this is just because the cameras aren't strong enough. If you get a really good camera and zoom in, you can still see that it keeps going. But you know what? The guys who engineer bridges disagree with you. The 1300 meter long Verrazano Narrows Bridge connects Staten Island and Brooklyn. Although they are perfectly vertical, they are 41 millimeters away from each other at the top, then at the bottom, as a result of the Earth's curvature. That's right, we actually have to take technology into account because the Earth is round. If the Earth isn't a globe, how come all our technology is working? What inventions have been designed based on a flat Earth model? Even the most primitive objects are designed for our curved world. The crow's nest is a structure in the upper part of a ship. Its purpose is to increase the visibility over the Earth's curve. This is the only reason it was invented. If a ship's deck is 13 feet above the sea, an observer can spot a high ship from 16 miles away. In the crow's nest, they can observe the same ship from 25 miles away. Why would the crow's nest be invented if it didn't work? What other purpose would it have. Now that I've told you those arguments, you're probably just thinking, oh, actually, yeah, that makes way more sense. That's perfectly acceptable. But if you use those exact same arguments and get someone who is a flat earther, they won't accept it. It's too late. The damage is done. It's been drilled in. That's why it's important for me to tell you the answer straight away, because you can't let misinformation fester, because your, your mind won't be able to decipher the difference between that and information. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Let me know if there's any other aspects of Flat Earth you want me to talk about. The sun, stars, the moon landing. Let me know and I'll upload a video as soon as possible. To learn more facts, check out my books. They're available on Amazon, on paperback, and Kindle. Thanks for watching. See you again.